South Africa, according to stats, I say the median age is 27. So what would you say to a 27-year-old South African to make them vote for you? And by all accounts, this election is definitely going to be swayed by a youth vote. You know, when it comes to young people voting, and I'm sorry for cutting the lady off, you know, when it comes to young people voting in South Africa, I honestly don't think that the political parties should actually convince young people to go out and vote. You look at how terrible things are, especially for young people in this country, man. You would think that young people would go out in full force because they want their lives to change. This whole thing that political parties must go out and convince the youth to go out and vote, I know that I'm one of those persons who came out and said that political parties need to do more in terms of convincing young people to go out and vote. But when I really think about it, I look at the situation and I look at how bad things are for young people in this country. And the fact that young people are sitting at home unemployed, it should be enough for them to go out and vote. So I think sometimes we tend to put a lot of pressure on political parties because I feel like at this moment they don't even know what to say anymore. I feel like political parties don't know what to say anymore because with this current situation, with how bad things are, young people men were supposed to say, 2024, we are not standing for that anymore. It's been 30 years of nothing but carnage, especially for young people's lives. You would think that young people would go out to vote. So this whole thing that political parties must go out and convince young people to vote, or what is it that you can say to young people to go out and vote, man? It looks like young people in this country, they are pretty happy with where their lives is. It looks like young people in this country, they are happy with the fact that they are receiving the grants. It looks like young people in this country, man, they are happy with the way things are. Because if young people were not happy with the way things are, they would actually stand up. They would actually stand up. They would not need political parties to convince them. They would not need anyone to convince them. They would not need us telling them nonsense each and every day that, guys, it is your right. You need to go out and vote. Why are we here every day, man, convincing young people to go out and vote, whereas the current situation in the country is affecting them the most? Why are we convincing young people to go out and vote, man? Young people are the ones that are struggling in South Africa now, right now. No one is struggling that it than young people right now. 60% of them, they are sitting at home unemployed. Many of them have already taken their own lives. Many of them, they are drug addicts. Many of them, they are drunk addicts. But what is it more that needs to be said about how bad things are in the country? I don't think political parties actually should go out and talk to their youth. As much as we say that, oh, we know that the, 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 uh, for, 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 for the country to change, young people need to go out and vote. But it looks like young people don't care. It looks like young people don't care, man. And I feel like it, as much as it is a painful thing to say, I think we really, we really need to be realistic when it comes to that. I think at some point, as, as people in this country, man, we really have to say that it looks like young people in this country, they don't care about their future. It looks like young people in this country, they don't care about the future of their children. Because what is, it, what, what, what is this talk of, of convincing young people to go out and vote? What is this talk of convincing young people to go out and vote? I mean... I mean, like, what is it that needs to be done? <laughs> you know, I always ask this question, man. What is it that the ANC needs to do for young people to say that, guys, these people are not for us? What is it that the ANC cadres need to do? Because I think at this point they have done everything in their power to convince the youth to go out and vote them out. Man, you know, I'm like sometimes when I honestly think like we are putting so much pressure, so much pressure on political parties, and I honestly think that the political parties at this moment they don't even know what to say anymore. I feel like political parties they don't know what to say anymore. Sometimes we are not being fair on political parties. We have to be honest with ourselves. This thing of convincing young people to go out and vote, man, it it, it was never supposed to be a conversation. It was never supposed to be a conversation. Young people were supposed to say, guys, you look where the country is. We are not working. Jobs are not coming. Load shedding is killing our businesses. 60% of young people that are studying their own businesses, they end up failing. Why? Because of load shedding. Today, you have hundreds and hundreds of young people who are drowning in debt because they started their own businesses. Those businesses failed. They took out loans, but those businesses failed. Me, like personally, guys, I think that the question that needs to be asked is... What is it that the ANC needs to do before young people in this country stand up and say, guys, it is enough? Twenty-seven-year-old South African to make them vote for you. And by all accounts, this election 
is definitely going to be swayed by a youth vote. So what would you say to a young person, whether they are voting for the first or the second time, to make them vote for you? Well, I think, um, let, let me take you through, I don't know, obviously, how much time you have. We've got the time. We've just had a, a policy conference uh, on the 12th to the 14th of um, uh, of uh, September last year. And, and those policies are uh, there. Please go. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to bring you guys uh, the, the hard copies, but you can no, find, fine. It we'll right find it. That's fine. We'll find it. Our policies in terms of um, uh, e our economic policies, we are saying we are going to be for the free market economy where unions will never have a veto right on our economic policies mm. so that uh, you as South Africans must be able to start businesses without uh, interference by the unions. We'll have the Department of Labor to protect uh, your rights in terms of um, uh, health and safety measures and sure. so forth. But we are not going to be the government that's going to tell um, Gareth uh, to, if I want to work for Gareth, to tell Gareth how much to pay me. If Gareth and I wants to, uh, I'm happy to work for Gareth, Gareth is able to pay me 4,000 rands a month or 6,000, whatever. And government has got absolutely nothing to do with us. Uh, uh, people expect me, I must rely on 350 rents. We, as Action SA, we are saying we are unapologetic. Please, uh, young South Africans, if you are looking for a racial party, go somewhere else. We'd lo love your vote. But one thing for sure is that we are committed to a non racial South Africa. So, And I think that is a very important statement. If you want a racial party, go somewhere else. And this is and this is another thing that is very sad in South Africa today, man. You would think that young people, with all of the problems that young people are facing today, you would think that young people would approach political parties with open mind. You would think that young people would not be swayed by sloganeering. But it looks like young people are willing to listen to these political parties who are trying to raise bait them into voting for them. This is what is happening right now in South Africa. Young people in South Africa, man, they are talking about apartheid, they are talking about oppression, they are talking about you cannot vote for a certain political parties. They are dismissing people like Hemen Mashaba, they are dismissing people like Musimaiman. Because they say these people are compromised, these people are, are, are funded by such and such. This is the conversations that young people are having, especially young people who are at least interested in having conversations about politics. Because the majority of young people in this country, it looks like they don't want to have any conversations when it, have, when it comes to politics. The young people who are interested in having conversations about politics, this is what they are saying. They are more interested in, in the racial parties. They are more interested in saying that that party is for the blacks, that party is for the white. They are not approaching political parties with open mind. They are not listening to the leaders of the different political parties with open mind. They are not taking what they are being told with open mind. This is what is happening right now in South Africa. You see the parties like EFF, the parties like the ANC, parties like African Congress for Transformation, parties like Umkondo Wesizo, that fake Umkondo Wesizo by Jacob Zuma. These parties are winning the narrative war on the ground because young people are telling you that, now nah, I don't want to vote for a party, man, that, 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 that is funded by the openness. I don't want to talk, I don't want to, to listen to him and Mashaba. I'm not even going to listen to Musme Iman. Musme Iman was the leader of the DA, so I'm not going to listen to him. And I think it is very important for him and Mashaba to say that we are committed to non-racial South Africa. We are committed to non-racial South Africa. All of these people who want to play politics, all of these people who want to play racial politics, they can go somewhere else. They can go somewhere else, but it is very sad that young people in this country, <laughs> they want to play the same racial politics. They want to play racial politics instead of we want to vote to make our lives better. They want to play racial politics. They are not interested in listening to the policies. They are not interested in debating some of these guys about their policies. They are simply interested about the EFF said that Hemen Mashaba is a puppet. So Hemen Mashaba is a puppet. So I am not going to listen to Action SA. I'm not going to listen to Musima Imani. I'm not going to listen to, to Songe Sozibi. I'm not going to listen to Shiluva. I'm not going to listen to all of these people because, Hemen, because Julius Malema told me so, because Cyril Ramaphosa told me so. Because Jacob Zuma said so, because Ace Makashule said so. On the ground, parties like the EFF, I know you would think that, man, it's unbelievable. How can young people, man, have so, have so like, how can they sell themselves so short? But it is exactly what is happening on the ground. It is exactly what is happening on the ground. They are being swayed by racial politics. 
Young people, men are being blackmailed into thinking that if you dare listen to Musume Mani, you are a quote unquote sellout. It's 2024, but that quote unquote sellout is still here in South Africa today. They are telling them that, guys, if you dare vote for, 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 for Hemen Mashaba, just remember that in the last election, man, or just three years ago, man, the Rupert gave Hemen Mashaba three, three, three million rands. So you cannot vote for the action essay. These are the same political parties that have thugs of funders you look at the eff the eff goes around talking about the funders of other political parties they say nothing about their own funders this is the same political party that that actually this is the same political party that admitted that they were funded by an illegal cigarette smuggler you think about how many people actually died in south africa because of this illegal cigarette smuggler and julius malema goes around telling people that if you are funded by the Rupert, if you are funded by the Open MS, you are the worst person in the world. But his own party admitted to being funded by the illegal cigarette smugglers. His party is being funded by the man that is killing the people on the ground. <laughs> this is the danger of racial politics, man. People are not applying their minds. This is the danger of racial politics. And I think it is very important for Emin Mashaba to say that, guys, we are committed to non-racial South Africa. I think all political parties, man, I think our country would be better if all political parties would actually come out and say that, guys, we are committed to non-racial South Africa. We are not going to listen to these political parties that are trying to bring back a segregation. Our forefathers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, they died so that we can have a bit of unity in this country. Then you have political parties walking around telling us that, guys, we need to segregate. We need to segregate. All of this unity is not working for us. We need to segregate. But as soon as white people saying the same things that they are saying, they are going to come out and say that these people are racist. Can you imagine if the Democratic Alliance goes around and telling people that guys, telling white people that guys, you cannot vote for the ANC, you cannot vote for the EFF, those guys are racist. Can you believe, like, like do you even understand what is, what is going to happen on the ground? Do you, do you know what is going to happen on the ground if Freedom Fund Plus were going around telling white people that, guys, you cannot vote for, our, for all of these political parties? They are a bunch of thugs. People would be calling them racist. But this is not what is happening. When these political parties are calling the likes of Hemen Mashaba, the likes of, of the DA, the likes of Songe Sozibi, this is not what is happening in the country. Racial politics is dangerous, guys. Racial politics, it is dangerous. These political parties, it is so easy for them to call everyone with all sorts of names. But if a white person dares say anything about the EFF, people will be on the ground burning tires because that person is racist. If Hunavald comes out and says that EFF is nothing but a bunch of thugs, I'm telling you, people would be on the ground burning tires because Hunavald is a racist. Hunavald needs to be dealt with. But it is okay for the likes of Julius Malema to tell people that you cannot even vote for that party of racists. You cannot even vote for, 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 for Action SA. Action SA is a DA light, so it is a party of racists. You cannot vote for that. You cannot vote for that. So, yes, Ozibi, as I say, they were given 15 million rands by the Open MS men. You cannot vote for that. That party is the Democratic Alliance. You cannot vote for that. Why? Because they're a bunch of racists. This is what they are saying. It is okay for them to call people with names, but when people fire back at them, those people are racist. This is the danger of racial politics. This is the danger of racial politics. This is the danger of racial politics. And like, it looks like young people in this country, they are not even willing to listen to that. It looks like young people in this country, man, they are more interested in, 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 in playing racial and identity politics. Young people, man, their future is on the line. Young people, their future is on the line. 60% of them, they are sitting at home. Many of them, they have children already. They are not working. 60% of them, they are sitting at home. But they are interested in playing racial politics instead of saying, guys, let's stop all of this nonsense. Can we please listen to what these people are saying? Can we please vote for someone who is actually going to help us? Can we please vote for someone who is actually going to rescue South Africa? No, this is not what young people are saying on the ground. Young South Africans, if you are looking for a racial party, go somewhere else. We'd love your vote. But one thing for sure is that we are committed to a non-racial South Africa. So if you feel you are looking for a racial party, we, we, are, we are happy to miss your vote. It's unfortunate, but it's your right. Uh, so you're a big you know, supporter of BEE or your white B supremacist. 
before I, before before they talk about it, you guys, you, you know, when you look at Hemen Mashaba, man, the story of Hemen Mashaba is quite inspiring, man. The story of Hemen Mashaba is quite inspiring. The fact that Hemen Mashaba started his own business in apartheid. Hemen Mashaba says this all the time that I started my business in apartheid. I knew that things were bad in the country, but I was never going to allow the apartheid regime to turn down my dreams. I was never going to allow the apartheid regime, the apartheid regime to shadow my dreams. So I, I, I pushed forward and became successful with my business. Today, you hear young people in South Africa telling you that our lives are upside down because of apartheid. And these people are living in democracy. They are telling you that their lives are upside down because of apartheid. But these people are living in democracy. Like, you would think that people like Hemen Mashaba would actually be an inspiration to young people in this country. You would think that young people in the, in the country would actually look up to people like Hemen Mashaba and say that I want to be like Hemen Mashaba. Hemen Mashaba, man, is a symbol of fight. Hemen Mashaba is a symbol of resilience. This man started his own business back in apartheid. He started a successful business in apartheid, translated into, into democracy. And now the man is a successful businessman. You would think that young people would actually look up to people like Hemen Mashaba, but no. But no, young people are even looking up to people who didn't do anything in apartheid. Young people are looking at the likes of, 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 of Julius Malema. This is, the, this is what young people are looking at. They are not looking at Hemen Mashaba. But if you are a rational young person, man, you listen to Hemen Mashaba, you read the story of Hemen Mashaba, you would actually say that, man, I would love to vote for someone like Hemen Mashaba. I would, I would actually love to consider voting for someone like Hemen Mashaba because this man knows what it takes to be resilient. This man knows what it takes to build a successful business. This is exactly what you would think young people would actually say. This is what you would think young people would say in South Africa, but no, they're not saying that. They are not saying that. They are calling Hemen Mashaba with all sorts of names. Hemen Mashaba built his business in apartheid, became successful in apartheid. These people are living in democracy. They are telling you their lives are upside down because of apartheid. If Hemen Mashaba could not allow apartheid to shadow his dreams, why are these people allowing the ANC democracy to shadow their dreams? If Hemen Mashaba could not be shut down by the apartheid government, why are these people allowing the ANC democracy to shut them, to shut them down? Many young people in this country, they don't care about the future of this country. Young people in South Africa, they don't care about the future of South, of South Africa. I know for months, I know for months, man, we came on the platform and we actually ridiculed the political parties for not being able to convince young people to go out and vote. But right now, I think we need to talk about the responsibility of young people, man. Young people also need to be responsible for their own future. People like Hemen Mashaba, back in the days, man, these people were fighting so that we can have this democracy that we are enjoying today. In democracy, it is not perfect. Of course, our democracy is not perfect. But we need to say that, guys, we need to take where these people actually left. We need to fight and take where these people left and take it forward. But this is not what is happening in the country. So I came to a conclusion that young people in the country, they don't care about the future of this country. Young people in this country, they want to play party, they want to play identity politics. Young people in this country, they love garbage politics. This is why they follow ANC and EFF so much. It's because they love garbage politics. They love hearing insults. They love, they love it when Fikil Mbalula and Hemen Mashaba are, are, are hailing insults at each other. This is what young people are attracted to in South Africa. Young people are not attracted to policy. Young people are not attracted to... to, to, to to policy young people are not attracted to people who are actually valuing education to the people who are actually building businesses successful businesses no no young people in this country man they are more interested in, in, in the racial politics young people are more interested when political parties become petty with each other this is exactly what excites them this is what excites them so me guys i've come to a conclusion young people in this country they don't care about the future of south africa Young people in South Africa, they don't care about the future of South Africa. You are looking for a racial party. We, we, are, we are happy to miss your vote. Unfortunate, but it's your right. So you're uh, a big you know, supporter of BEE or your white B, supremacist. We, are the, we are the first political party since 1994 to openly um, uh, saying BEE. -E, it, it, uh, if South Africans give us the mandate, we are going to bury it, and we are going to bury it in a, an unmarked grave. You have I mean, like BEE, -E, Black Economic Empowerment, the black people have never been empowered. Black Economic Empowerment, young people, black people in South Africa, they have never been empowered. For us to still have BEE -E today, we don't know why. <laughs> 
how many BE beneficiaries do you know in the townships? How many people can, can actually stand up and say that I'm a beneficiary of BE in the townships? There is not a single person that I know in the townships that can stand up and say that I'm a beneficiary of the BE. But political parties will tell you that when BE, it is very important. Ramaphosa will tell you that BE is here to stay. Black people, men, will be empowered economically. So BE will, will, will be here to stay. <laughs> this is what Cyril Ramaphosa is telling people in South Africa. But when you actually look at it, when you look at how black people are actually living in South Africa, you can see that this whole BE thing is not helping anyone. It's not helping anyone, but it's lining the pockets of the likes of Cyril Ramaphosa and his ANC friends. That's why when you see people like Hemen Mashaba, man, they are against it because they can see what is happening on the ground. They can see that black people on the ground, man, they are not being empowered in any way, shape or form. They are not being empowered. I've said that, and, and the and, D, and the and DA then, have changed their position on this. We, we're going to yes. no, but we've got, but we've got our own policy yeah. called mm. uh, inclusive uh, economic empowerment, where businesses are going to be forced uh, to to pay a percentage of their profits to an opportunity fund, and this opportunity fund is going to be used exclusively uh, in communities which were. Uh, discriminated against during apartheid, discriminated by the ANC, tenderpreneurs and oligarchs to build schools, fund uh, their oligarchs. businesses and, and, and so forth. So we are not just, uh, we, because we are for empowerment of black people, we are unapologetic about this, mm -hmm. but we are not going to do this at the expense of uh, uh, pitting South Africans against uh, each other. Right. Every business right. must contribute so cool. that we uplift uh, people. So if uh, so, if you are looking for, for ANC uh, triple B of two, 2003, that policy, I'm going to be the, 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 well, the just pastor the on the that. The regulations day. alone are strangling us in bureaucracy. Oh, let me tell you, that, that policy, um, Kaitan, I'm going to be the, 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 the priest on that day. Um, because we are going to bury it uh, in an amar <laughs> grave in the middle of night in a in a bush, and if you are most welcome to be there, but unfortunately, the only thing that you must understand, as much as it's in at night, so, uh, whatever, but we'll still cover your eyes. You, you wouldn't so, know so where we buried. Your message <laughs> to young people is: you will create the conditions for economic opportunity. Absolutely. We okay. We will we will um, close our borders uh, for for bad apples. Mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, I will be the one every day at our borders, at our airports, to have a red carpet for people who are coming to invest, to bring the skills, come and enjoy our country. But uh, drug dealers, uh, to, to people coming to South Africa, I can tell you our borders are going to be closed. And it is so funny, when you, when, every time you know when we talk about this thing of open borders, the first political party that comes to mind is the EFF. The EFF, they are advocating for the open border policy. And they are, they are advocating for the open border policy. But at the same time, they are going around and saying that we are fighting for, 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 for black people on the ground. We are fighting for poor black people on the ground. But at the same time, we are advocating for the open borders. So these people are actually willing to ignore all the troubles that is brought in South Africa by illegal immigrants. These people, men, are willing to say that, guys, we are fighting for your rights. There on the ground, we are fighting for your rights. But at the same time, we are going to open the borders so that all of these criminals can come into South Africa because we don't believe that there's a foreigner in South Africa. We are all Africans. We are all Africans. So that's why, to me, it doesn't make any sense when young people say that I want to vote for the EFF, especially young people who are not working. Can we imagine if the EFF comes into power and they, <laughs> and they open the borders? And all of the all of the criminals and all of the illegal immigrants are coming to South Africa. Are these people? Are these young people who are advocating for the EFF today? Are they going to find any employment? Are their lives going to be improved? Is crime going to go down because of open border policy? I don't know why don't young people don't actually think about these things. I don't know why people who actually love these political parties who always prioritize racial and identity politics. I don't know why they don't think about these things. Because how can you vote for, for a party that actually advocates for the open border policy, whereas today we already have a problem of illegal immigrants in the country? And they say that we are, we are fighting for the economic freedom. Like, how can, you, how can you fight for the economic when you're going to open the borders for, young, for black people in this country to fight for, for, to fight for the employment opportunities with the illegal immigrants? 
They are going to force young people in this country to fight for the employment opportunities with illegal immigrants. But to them, it is fine. It is okay. That's why, guys, I'm telling you that this is the danger of racial and identity politics. Because once people step into the racial and identity politics, they don't think of anything else. They don't think of, of anything else. They are not racial in any way, shape, or form. They are not racial in, the, in, in they are not rational in their thinking. Man, I'm, I'm at... <sighs> Murderers, um, rapists, drug dealers, we catch you. I can tell you if you get life sentence, it's going to be life sentence. Tabo, Tabo best as an example. Under Action SA, please don't tell me we must rehabilitate Tabo Best. No, what for? <laughs> it's not going to come out of jail. I've no time to. Tabo Best uh, uh, is not going to come out of jail. If the court has found him guilty and sentenced him to life, it's going to be life without uh, parole under Action SA. And over and above that, what we added is that uh, all these uh, heinous criminals, they're not going to get free accommodation, free meals. No. What are you going to do? Ma Monday to on a Thursday like this, uh, our instruction as Action SA will pass laws. Eight o'clock, by eight o'clock, no one already sentenced this heinous crime, cr criminals. And we'll separate them from the, 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 the petty, petty criminals. Crime. Sure. All these heinous criminals, eight o'clock, all of them, there must not be no one in the cells. What are they going to be doing? There must be in the farms working. Oh, forced <laughs> must, labor. Not forced labor. It's not forced labor. No, they're paying back to society. Five to eight. They'll I mean, like, when you think about what is happening in the, in, 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 in the, in the ANC correctional service, man, it is actually a joke. It is actually a joke that taxpayers are paying to, like, to take care of the people who are terrorizing them. Criminals are terrorizing South Africans every day. But when these people are, are, are taken to jail, taxpayers are paying to take care of the same people who are terrorizing them. It is a joke. It is a joke. And they come out and say that, no, it is not a jail. It is a correctional services. What kind of correctional services? What kind of correctional services? How many criminals have actually went to jail and come out and say that I'm a different person today? They don't have the statistics of that. They don't have statistics of that. You will, you will never hear Ronald Lamola come out and say that last year we arrested 5,000 criminals, we released 2,500 criminals, and 1,800 criminals of these people men, have actually changed. This is not what is happening. Criminals men, are like, like they see jail as holiday. They see jail as holiday. When criminals are, are too hot outside, they know that I, I'm, I just have to commit a crime so that I can go to jail because I know the taxpayers of this country, they are going to take care of me. It is a joke. How can you actually force the taxpayers who have been terrorized by criminals to take care of criminals? It is a joke. <laughs> it is a joke. A completely farce. It is a joke. I mean, Mashaba is telling the truth, man. These people need to work for their own food. Taxpayers do not need to take care of the people who are terrorizing them. If these people want to terrorize South Africa, they need to understand that when you go to jail, you are going to work for your own food. You are not going to sit there watching television. These people are, are watching television. They are live on the Instagram. They are live on Facebook. Man. They are shooting videos. They are creating content in jail. These are the same people that have terrorized the South Africans. They are creating content in jail. They are having the nicest lives in jail. This is not how it's supposed to be. This is not how it's supposed to be, man. You need to make criminals, like, you need to make people scared of going to jail. People need to understand that, man, going to jail, man. You, like, guys, have you watched the documentary of some of these prisons in, 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 in countries like Philippines? In what, what, what is this new country that the president of the country has actually transformed? Um, the president of that country was speaking at the conservative event recently, the CPEC event. It is not Nicaragua, man. But guys, you, you get what I'm saying. Like the countries like, and some of the countries in Africa, their jails are terrible. Criminals, people are scared to go to jail because they know that, man, if you go to jail, the people are not going to take care of you. The people are not going to take off. They are not, to they are not going to take care of you. We need to make jail feel like jail. Criminals need to understand that, man, when I'm in jail, man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you don't want to go back there. That That is the only way to rehabilitate people. 
You cannot tell me that someone can murder someone and they go to jail and they are given free food every day, three meals. Man, criminals are having meals while the average citizens on the county cannot even afford pop. Criminals are given meals every day, three times. These people are eating, these people are gymming, these people are playing sports. They are having the nicest lives in, in, in jail. Jail needs to feel like jail. We need to make jail feel like jail. This whole thing of, of Ronald Lamula and the correctional service is not working for South Africa. It is not working for South Africa. Be back in the cells at five o'clock. <laughs> if they want a break, they'll get break on Saturday <laughs> if, uh, if, if they cooperate. And all those right. who don't cooperate, they'll work seven days. And then Sunday, all of them, half a day, they must be in church. So can we just <laughs> wow. can we ask we can we ask about yes. health? I mean like I mean like I mean like I mean like guys, I'm telling you, man, like people people will change people will change their lifestyles today. All of these criminals will change their lifestyles today. If they knew that man, if I go to jail, I'm gonna work every day from Monday to Friday. 8 a.m. I'm already out, I'm gonna come back at 5 a.m. I'm working at the farms. I'm working so hard at the farms. People would actually change that. People would actually change their lifestyles. But this is not what is happening in South Africa. Criminals, man, when they see jail, they see holiday. You know, right now you are saving up some money so that you can take your family out to to Cape Town. You can take your family out to Mauritius to a nice holiday. This is what criminals are seeing when they see jail. When they see jail, they see a nice holiday in Cape Town. They see a nice holiday in Mauritius. And it's not supposed to be like that. And I, like, I'm one person, man, who never understood why our taxpayers actually forced to take care of the people who are terrorizing them. Okay. So let's, I let's, think that that's uh, this is just to thing. give you. I, I yeah. mean, I, I can. Uh, yeah, 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 we yeah. believe in social wow. justice. That is why the 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 the, the abolishment of uh, the BE and come out with our own inclusive employment sure. or okay. whatever no, it, it, is, is, is to address social justice. Because I'm in politics to make sure that we uplift the poor people. All right. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. You, you, you. And when you look at people like Heman Mashaba, man, Heman Mashaba doesn't even need to be in politics, man. The fact that today people are insulting Heman Mashaba, they're making Heman Mashaba as if without politics is nothing. Heman Mashaba is already a successful businessman. He doesn't need to go into politics. When you look at Heman Mashaba, man, you remember someone like Donald Trump. <laughs> These people, man, they don't need to go into politics because they have already succeeded. These people are already successful in their own lives. But because these people love their own countries, they are out there fighting for their own countries. Heman Mashaba loves South Africa so much that He's willing to say that, guys, as much as I'm a successful businessman, I'm willing to say that, man, I want to fight for my own country. Then you have young people in this country who don't know nothing about Hemen Mashaba going around pretending like Hemen Mashaba is a career politician. Hemen Mashaba is not a career politician. This man is a successful businessman. He's not a career politician. And the fact that we are not even acknowledging the fact that he's willing to, 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 to put himself on the line He's willing to allow himself to be insulted by a bunch of ignorant people who don't know nothing because he loves his own country. He's willing to be insulted by people who know nothing about his own about his history. That's how much Hemen Mashaba actually loves South Africa. That's how much he loves South Like that's why I have so much respect for Hemen Mashaba. Because many people who actually were in position of Hemen Mashaba would not participate in politics. For what? For what? Why should I go into politics to be insulted by people who are not even grateful? Why should I go into politics to be insulted by people who don't want their country to change? I would take my money and go to live in the United States or UK or somewhere else. This is what many people in Hemen Machaba's position are doing. But young people in this country, they are failing to understand that. They are failing to understand that the likes of Hemen Machaba, people like Hemen Machaba, are actually living in South Africa. They don't care about getting into political arena. They don't care about South Africa. They have already made enough money. They don't care about South Africa. They don't. Herman Mashaba is not a career politician. He is not a career politician. He doesn't need to be in politics. He doesn't need to start a political party. He doesn't need to be so stressed out. You can see he's already having the, 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 the gray hair because South Africa is stressing him so much. He doesn't need to. I'm sure sometimes his family says, man, why did you even start a political party? It's not like you needed money. It's not like you needed money. You already have enough money. You already have businesses that are thriving. It's not like you needed money. Why did you go into politics? I'm sure this is a conversation that his family is having with him 
every time that man why are you letting yourself to be insulted by these people you were there in apartheid man you started a business in apartheid you became successful you came into the into this democracy you became more successful instead of stepping back and being selfish you you came out and said that i am going to fight for my own country i am going to start a political party and fight for south africa i'm sure his family is like man you didn't have to do this you didn't have to do this <laughs> man south africans are something else man south africans are something else you see julius malema man every time when he talks about him and mashaba he makes it look like Hemen Mashaba is, is after the money. Hemen Mashaba is petty for the money. Hemen Mashaba is begging people for the money. Hemen Mashaba is more successful than Julius Malema could ever think of being successful. Hemen Mashaba is so successful, it's, it's insane. Hemen Mashaba is not a career politician. He's not out there begging people for donors. Like, of course he has a political party. Of course they need to have fundings. But it's not like him. Personally, he needs the money. He's already successful. He has enough money on his own. You watch people like the, you watch people like Julius Malema, man. You watch the followers of the EFF insulting him and Mashaba as if him and Mashaba is a career politician. He is not a career politician. People need to go back and read the history of him and Mashaba. People need to watch the interviews of him and Mashaba. Listen to where this man comes from. Man, South Africans are not being appreciative. Man, South Africans are not appreciating. South Africans are not appreciating. They are saying the same things about the Muslim man. Muslim man, like he's saying the same thing, man. You know, like after leaving the Democratic Alliance, man, I went into business. I could have just stayed into business, man, and made my own money and left this political left this politics nonsense. But he still came back with the political party because he cares about South Africa. He still came back with the political party. Muslim man could have stayed running his own businesses. He could have stayed there, but he came back with the political party. Then you have a bunch of ungrateful people insulting the likes of Muslim Iman, the likes of Hemen Mashaba, pretending like Muslim Iman is a career politician, pretending like Hemen Mashaba is a career politician. These people are successful business people. They've already made their own money. This is why I am not surprised when people say that uh, I was not surprised with that rumor that President Ramaphosa actually wanted to resign from the African National Congress. I'm not surprised because Ramaphosa like, is like, man, I've already made my billions. <laughs> why am I here? Why am I being insulted by these people, man? I already have enough money. I can leave South Africa today. I can take my family and leave South Africa today. I am not surprised that at one point, Ramaphosa actually wanted to resign from the African National Congress. He is not a career politician. He has already made his own money. <laughs> he has already made his own money, man. He has already made his own money. Guys, man, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabao, so I will see you next time. Bye-bye.